I underestimated the amount of work a whole Meshuggah month entails. I won't lie. <laughs> All right, Meshuggah is here. This whole month will be dedicated to this epic band, so if you like this content, consider subscribing so you won't miss any of these banger songs. To start this month off, you guys voted for Electric Red from the album Obzen, and who am I to disagree? For each riff in this song, I'll show you the distribution of instruments in our guest vs. host table. And we'll have our beloved Meshuga calculator with all the numbers for you guys to watch. Yalla, we have six riffs, so buckle up kids, let's go. This opening riff is pretty simple. We're in 4-4 with an eighth note subdivision, and this section is four bars long. The phrase we have here is in seven, and it sounds like this. All instruments here are playing the riff, so our faith in math is what keeps the 4-4 alive. And as you can see in the calculator, we get four full reps, plus four eighth notes at the end. Quite a way to open a song. Riff number two is the first verse, even though it starts a bit before, and it's similar to the previous one in a very cool way. So you know how these blocks represent eighth notes, and how one eighth note equals two sixteenth notes? So, if we slice these in half, we can fit two 716 phrases in the same duration as one 78 phrase. This also repeats for four bars, so we get eight reps instead of four, and the remainder stays the same, so four eighth notes or eight sixteenth notes. The instrumentation doesn't change, by the way. Quite a way to continue a song. Okay, no more fun and games. This riff is brutal. The sequence looks like this. 3 4 4 3 3 3 8 3 3 and 3 4 4 3 3 3 11. And this sums up to 65, and in an 8 bar section, this can only fully repeat once, almost twice. Which means that in the second repeat, this long note, that is originally 11 notes long, is cut by two subbeats. We have two versions of this riff, where in the second one, we're blessed by a china symbol, playing the quarter notes. Here we go. This riff is the only one I'll show using notation. Eh, sorry about that. It looks like this, where the lower notes are the kick drum, and the higher notes are the snares. These also correlate to the pitch on the guitars. By the way, some of you comment about me analyzing everything through a drummer's perspective, which is true for two reasons. One, usually when dealing with rhythmic segments, 
drums and percussion take the more influential role in the execution of that part and are usually the easiest to represent visually. And two, well... Anyway, this riff is 31 beats long and repeats for 16 bars, which gives us 8 full reps with a remainder of 8. And technically the crash is playing 8th notes, so I'm gonna put it here, but note how because it's washier and less harsh than the china cymbal, the pulse doesn't pop out as much. And on its second repeat, a lead guitar is added to the fourth side by playing long whole notes on every beat one of every bar. Let's play that one. Epic sh**. Okay, two more. This riff is awesome. We have a group of low notes in this order. 4-3-3, 4-3-3. Followed by a repeated high note. And that high note is nicely padded with a 16th note rest on each side, so it's nicely separated. And if we count the rests, this high note will always be worth 3 beats. Rest, note, rest. Okay, maybe not all high notes. I mean, this one doesn't have the rest at the beginning because of uh, reasons. This riff totals at 37 beats and spans over 8 bars. So we have 3 full rips of this phrase with a 17 beat remainder, which is played as a portion of this riff, till here. And for the first run of this riff, the snare is playing beat 3 of the 4-4, joined by the hi-hat in the second run. Alright, last one. The outro riff for this song is quite simple and is a massive headbanger. The way I hear this one is like this. 2-3-4, 2-3-4. All 16th notes. But now the question is, where do you start counting from? The way this riff is organized, I hear the long note as the end of the phrase. So in my ears, the beginning of the riff is here, but in the song, the section starts here, right before this beat. Check it out. And even though this riff fades out, there's this amazing fill that seems to just come out of nowhere. I freaking love this fill. Listen to it a couple times and try to figure out why does it make sense for it to be specifically there.
And just like that, we're done. I hope you guys are ready for a full month of Meshuga content, because that's exactly what's coming your way. Stay tuned, stay cool, and I'll see you next week.